Right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Reline and Rehabilitation Solutions Part 2. This is the second in our new three-part webinar series. Presenting today is Martin Barrett, who I will introduce shortly. My name is Liz Bouchard, and I look after Armtech for Armtech's marketing department. My group runs our webinar program and I'll be your host for today's event. We look forward to taking your questions at the end. Simply enter them into the question and answer box at the bottom of your screen and editing time throughout the presentation. Attending this session will qualify you for a one hour technical informal CPD credit. A certificate will be emailed to all attendees. I will start off with a brief introduction to ArmTech. We are one of Canada's oldest and largest infrastructure companies, supplying a full range of steel and HDPE-based bridge and culvert materials, as well as stormwater management. We serve numerous sectors, including municipal, forestry, transportation, commercial, retail, and residential construction. ArmTech has over 30 locations coast to coast and is part of the WGI Westman group of companies. WGI is Canada's largest commercial user of steel in Western Canada and has over 1,500 employees. Presenting today is Martin Barrett. Martin is Armtech's product manager of Stormwater Pipe. Martin holds a civil engineering degree from Laval University and is a professional engineer registered in the province of Quebec. Martin has over 25 years of experience in the urban infrastructure market with more than 20 years spent in the thermoplastic pipe industry for water and wastewater applications. I will now hand this presentation off to Martin. Welcome, Martin. Hey, Liz, thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much. I don't know what you and your team did with this picture, but I never looked so good. So I might uh, ask you to send it back to me so I can use it for my Christmas cards. <laughs> so I'm gonna initiate the share screen and uh, welcome attendees to the new way of uh, conducting lunch and learns. So Liz, can you confirm if uh, the slide is showing? Yes, Martin, I can okay. see the slide, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. So like I said, thank you for uh, attending uh, this new way of conducting lunch and learns. I guess for our uh, audience in Quebec and Ontario, this is lunch and learn. Atlantic Canada, it's uh, late lunch and learn. And uh, for our friends out west, I guess it's coffee break and learn. So in, at Arm Tech, we like to uh, get people involved. And uh, right off the bat, just so we can actually get to know you people a little bit uh, more and a little bit better, uh, I, we have a poll question for you. So we'd like to know, the first thing we'd like to know is, have you been involved with slip lining projects in the past? And we'll give you a few seconds to answer, maybe 15 seconds. That's a pretty tight race. All right, Liz, I think we can uh, end the polling. Thank you very much. So, all right, so about our third, a third of our audience has uh, done uh, slip lining in the past. Looks like uh, quite a few people are here to uh, learn a bit more about slip lining. So without further ado, we'll get uh, into uh, the presentation. All right, so today's agenda is uh, as follows. We're gonna, first of all, why go trenchless? There are so many options out there in, to repair infrastructures, installing brand new pipes with the uh, traditional uh, open trench installation method. So why go trenchless? Then if we decide to go trenchless, uh, our presentation today has a special focus on slip lining. Slip lining an old infrastructure to install a brand new pipe inside of it. So we're gonna look at the basics of that. Uh, we're also going to take a look at the attributes that are, uh, we are searching for, for the pipe that we would use to insert inside the whole pipe, and then have a closer look at steel reinforced poly polyethylene pipe and what it is. Uh, and uh, it may surprise you, but this is not just a technical presentation. Steel reinforced polyethylene pipe is at its heart a love story, and I'll tell you more about that when we get there. Uh, we're going to look at the standards that apply to uh, steel reinforced polyethylene pipe, how we manufacture the pipe to meet those standards. 
Uh, and making a great pipe is one thing, but you want to be sure that you have a good, if not great joint options and fittings to go with it. Then the long-term performance of uh, this steel reinforced polyethylene pipe, how was it, in, uh, well, how was it evaluated? And then, then we're going to look more specifically at the Duromax product for slip lining application. Later on, we're going to have a few case studies from projects that took place in Canada and a couple in the United States. And we'll conclude and we'll have time for, for uh, questions from the audience. So why go trenchless? I guess we want to go trenchless to avoid the, these images I just put on the screen. You know, long uh, duration street closures, uh, businesses that struggle uh, when these streets are closed and uh, their customers can't access them. Uh, compounded traffic, I mean, our large cities in Canada already suffer to traffic congestion. Why would we want to compound that by opening up streets if it can be avoided? Why dig up a highway uh, if you can instead insert a brand new pipe inside an old infrastructure and turn it into a brand new culvert without disrupting traffic at all? Uh, even on uh, for airports why dig up the tarmac i mean even if nowadays during the, those COVID times we might have time to dig up the tarmac we want to avoid that let's insert a brand new piece of infrastructure inside an old one and be done with it so as a uh, as we think about why we go trenchless here comes our second poll question for you and we'd like to know how much of a factor is traffic disruption when you design a project so Liz, thank you for putting up the answer box. We'll give you like 20 seconds to think about it and uh, you can uh, provide your answers. All right, I think Liz, we can uh, end the polling. So I'm glad to see that uh, for all of the audience, uh, traffic is an issue. I mean, I understand that it can be a major preoccupation if you're dealing with a project in a large city. Sometimes it's, if you're in a rural area, maybe uh, it's less of a factor, but uh, it's never fun to uh, create detours and, uh, you know, uh, impose uh, traffic disruption. So glad to see that this is why the people are attending this Lunch and Learn to learn more about how to do projects without disrupting traffic too much. So let's look, go back to our agenda, the basics of slip lining. So basically what you're doing, you're inserting a brand new piece of pipe inside an old decayed uh, infrastructures. So basically two methods uh, offer themselves to you. You can pull every segment of the brand new pipe individually inside the old pipe. So you would pull your first segment, make sure it's blocked in place, pull the second segment. If you're using a low profile bell and spigot joining system, the pipe pulling equipment and lubricating the spigot and bell will allow you to insert these pipes together if you're using a welded joint, like we will discuss later, you can actually abut these segments together and then proceed with the welding. The advantage of you going piece by piece is it reduces the amount of force you have to apply on your pipe as you insert it into the existing infrastructure. This being said, if you have enough room, and this is another airport example, if you have enough room to dig up a larger pit, you can decide to assemble trains of liner pipes, maybe a single train if that's enough, maybe a couple of trains, and then you insert those inside the hose pipe. The advantage is you can do your joints outside the hose pipe. You can actually eyeball those joints, make sure that they're done absolutely properly and insert those. And if you have a couple of trains, then you do a weld inside the hose pipe or if you, again, if you're using a low profile bell and spigot, you can actually do that. So if, we're look, if we look at a basic, very basic uh, uh, graph representation, so you will have assembled your first strain of three pipes, you pull it all the way in, then your next strain, pull or push, then your next strain will come in and assemble at 
the location where the two trains meet. It's always recommended to fill the annular space uh, between the new pipe and the hose pipe. Uh, you want to prevent flotation. One way of doing it is to fill the new pipe with water, but when you're dealing with a very large diameter pipe, you might require a large amount of water, which is something you may want to avoid. So the other option is to work with grout ports on your new pipe. So you can have grout ports installed. You make sure that one of them is at the 12 o'clock position and you can then brace your new pipe through that grout port using the hose pipe as a secure point of anchorage. And then this way, when you proceed by a lift installing your grout, you're gonna be sure that the, the new pipe will not float and rest against the top of the new infrastructure. And once you've reached your third lift, you can actually remove the brace, plug the grout port and finish installation. So you can pump, pump grout through ports or you can I also use grout tubes that are inserted into the void around the pipe to pump your grout. So if we look at those different options, this is grout being pumped through a port or here you've got your grout tubes and the grout has been poured in. So you've decided that trenchless is the way to go. Uh, in the case of your specific project, slip lining is a good option. So what attributes should you be looking for, for when you're searching for the perfect pipe to do the slip line? Well, you want a pipe that is as lightweight as possible. So you want to be sure that you're not uh, adding uh, unnecessary requirements of force to pull that pipe or push that pipe in. If that pipe can be made to custom lengths, longer when possible, shorter when you're uh, constrained with space, that'd be great. You want a, a large ID. By large ID, I mean you want to maximize the new ID of the infrastructure that has been inserted inside the host pipe. So you want a strong pipe product without a wall that is too thick. And this is uh, what we're gonna be looking at. You want a product that is strong, you want it durable, you want uh, reliable, tight, joints, you want good hydraulics, because since you're going to be reducing your ID, you want to be using a smooth, you want to have a smooth inside walls with the lowest manning coefficient possible. It'd be nice for this pipe to be uh, able to be used for culverts, storm sewers, sanitary sewers. And finally, whatever pipe material you select, you want to be sure it answers to demanding standards. So, this takes us into uh, our next poll question. We'd like to know before we start talking about uh, steel reinforced polyethylene pipe, have you ever used steel reinforced polyethylene pipes on a project before? Be it open cut, doesn't have to be trenchless. Uh, we just wanna know if you're familiar with the steel reinforced polyethylene pipe product. Again, we'll give you another, an additional 10 seconds. Right. Okay, so steel reinforced polyethylene pipe, this uh, is not taking place in vain. We'll be able to tell you more about the product and you'll have a better grasp of the technology after we're done today. So steel reinforced polyethylene pipe, what is it? I said that it's a love story and uh, I say that half jokingly, of course. Uh, the love story is when you create a relationship, you want to be sure you have strength. So steel does that. Steel, steel brings strength to this relationship between steel and HDPE. But what is a strong relationship if it, if it doesn't enter the test of time? So that's where HDPE comes in. HDPE offers longevity. So we're, what we're basically doing is making sure that both products bring to the table, we rely on what they do best, and we minimize any weaknesses they may have. So for the longest time, steel and polyethylene were leading their lives. They felt that something was missing somewhere in their life. So one day they created a Tinder profile. They probably both swiped right at the same time. And I'm here to tell you about the result of that union, steel reinforced polyethylene pipe. And uh, more specifically, Duromax steel reinforced polyethylene pipe. As you can imagine, it's a pipe, so it can be used in uh, open cut installation. 
it can and it is used extensively throughout North America in open cut installation. But the nice thing about Duromax, it's a very good option to allow you to insert a new pipe inside an old uh, decayed infrastructure. So I'm, we're telling you about Duromax. The first thing we want to check upon is what standards apply to this product. This is a product that comes to us through a partnership with uh, a uh, company called Contech. Armtech and Contech have partnered to bring Duromax to the Canadian market. So since this product is used all across North America, it answers to both uh, demanding American, North American and Canadian standards. Starting with the material classification at the bottom, we want to be sure that we're using a pressure rated HDP resin. So that uh, tells us that we, we know all the properties of that resin. It's been classified for pressure usage, even though we're building a gravity system. We know that this HDP resin will provide the longest duration possible to our system. It can be designed using relying on Ashto LRFD design method. Uh, it is uh, manufactured in accordance with ASTM standards, ASHTO standards, but most importantly, it meets all the requirements of the CSA standards B182.14 and B182.15, which are the steel reinforced polyethylene pipe standards that apply in Canada. And these pipes can be installed in accordance with the CSA standard B182.11, which govern the installation of a flexible pipe in Canada. So these are the standards you'd be looking at. And what you need to know is that these standards, they cover everything that has to be covered when you're making a pipe, from the dimensions, uh, the quality of the steel, the quality of the, HD, the, the resin, the HDP resin, uh, the uh, requirements for the joint tightness, depending if you're making a storm a sewer method or a storm sewer pipe or a sanitary sewer pipe. So these standards define what steel reinforced polyethylene pipe should be and what it should bring to the table when you select it as your preferred pipe material for a project. And talking about material selections, this leads us to our fourth poll question. We'd like to know what is your preferred specification method when you uh, go about designing a project and you want you to select your uh, pipe material or any material on your project. So Liz, if you could put up the answer box, please. We'll give you a few moments to look at these uh, answers and select the one that uh, represents what you do most. Give it maybe more, 10 more seconds, please, uh, Liz, until the majority of people have voted. Let's go to 45 seconds. All right, so I like these answers. I mean, it shows that the market is evolving. There used to be a time uh, when I started in the business in the late 90s where we would see a lot of uh, company name and brand name being mentioned. Uh, at ArmTech, we like the idea of referencing a performance standard. So this way, when you re reference standards, you bring the market up. I mean, you impose on the manufacturers uh, the need to actually make a product that uh, meets requirements of the standards. You also benefit from uh, the competition inherent to the marketplace. So anybody who makes a product that meet the standards requirements can actually bid on your project. And these uh, savings uh, help you do more with your dollar. So manufacturing, how do we make sure that the product meets the, demand, the demands of the standards? All right, manufacturing, Duromax steel reinforced polyethylene pipe, it starts this way. There's a, the extrusion of a high density polyethylene profile made from pressure rated HDPE resin. 
Then high strength galvanized steel is inserted into the profile. That's where the steel comes into play. Then a second extrusion, second and final extrusion takes place to make sure that the steel is fully encapsulated. So the way, this way steel will never see light of day. It will be used for what it does best, provide strength to your pipe material, and it will be protected by HDPE because HDPE will do what it does best. It is an inert thermoplastic material that can be used in the widest pH range uh, in the market, for example, from one to 13. So you know that your steel is protected for the longest time possible. Once the profile has been fully encapsulated, it is then stored in big coils. So this way you have coils of profiles at your manufacturing facility that you can draw from to make the pipe. So our partners, uh, Contech, they have a manufacturing facility in Montgomery, Alabama, which services uh, the, north, the eastern part of America, North America, and they have a facility in Utah that services the western part of North America. And Armtech, through the partnership we have with them, can have a pipe store uh, in stock in both eastern and western locations across Canada. So three different profile size, sizes exist. And as you can imagine, the larger your pipe, the stronger your profile. So if you go from the smallest diameters of uh, 750 to 1050 millimeter, 30 to 42 inches, as you go up, to the sizes of 1200 to 1500, you can see that the size of your profile, the height of the steel increases by almost 50%, and then an additional 30% uh, increase when you go to the very large uh, size of pipe. So now let's see how these profiles are used to make pipe. And the example we've got is the manufacturing of a 60 inch or 1500 millimeter pipe. And I was mentioning we can go big on the right side. This is the largest case uh, cage currently available in the marketplace. It allows to make 10 foot diameter pipe or 3000 millimeters. But go back to the 60 inch or 1500 I was talking about. As you can see, this is the five rib profile. The one that is right here. Five rib profile being fed from a big coil that you can see in this picture. It is then being shaped into uh, the form of the pipe in a pipe making cage. This cage allows for the exact control of the diameter. We know that the diameter will be 1500 millimeter. Inside that cage, this is where the magic happened, where the every profile segment is welded to the one before it as it gets into that cage and it is a very uh, well controlled process. So you see the, the profile here being fed into the machine. There's an extrusion HDP extrusion welder, a gun, extrusion welding gun right here. And it is laser control, laser measured, temperature is controlled, every segment is welded. So the HDP of each segment is melted, then the uh, HDP. Uh, welding rod is fed in. I'd like you to notice that we're using blue resin in the weld seam. And the reason for that is it facilitates the QC, the quality control observation. So if you look at the pipe on the outside, when it reaches your job site or as it being installed in the traditional method, it's easy to see that every segment of pipe has been fully welded to the preceding one. Uh, if you do a CCTV inspection or walkthrough on a very large diameter pipe like this one, again, it's very easy to visually confirm that every segment has been welded the way it should have been. So if you notice a gap into those blue lines, do a, a closer inspection because there might be an issue. Again, a few more pictures of the pipe being manufactured. Nice thing about this product, it comes in standard four meter and six meter lengths, but we can do any custom lengths you might need. We can go shorter if you have a space constraint to do a slip line project. This is especially true of slip line. We can go longer. 
So we can make, basically we are limited by the size of the flatbed that can bring pipe to your job site. So that's another advantage of the product, the versatility that the uh, custom lengths uh, allows you. So, like I said, you can make the best pipe in the world. If you don't join it properly and it leaks, eh, well, it's not the best pipe in the world. So what does Duromax offer as far as joining? Traditional, soil tight, very basic. Uh, when you do an open cut culvert and it doesn't matter if water seeps in or out and you just wanna be sure that you're not damaging your backfill by prevent, so you wanna prevent uh, soil fines from migrating inside your pipeline, that's one thing. We're not gonna focus on that today, even though we're gonna talk about it briefly. We're gonna talk about the high performance joint, the balanced spigot and the welded couplers. So soltite is just that, it's soltite. I mean, it's a flat gasket material that is inserted, uh, put in place between the ribs, and then you have a metal coupler that goes around it. This is an example of it in the field. Now, if we're talking high performance, this is a balanced spigot joint. Uh, it's assembled the same way any bell and spigot pipe is assembled in the field, but I'd like you to notice a few things. The bell, just like the rest of the pipe, the bell is steel reinforced. So we know the bell is as strong as our pipe barrel. Then please note on the right that the spigot end is also steel reinforced. So when you insert your spigot into your bell, you've created the strongest part of your pipeline. You've got double reinforcement right there. And the way to assemble it is just like any other uh, bell and spigot type of uh, pipe you have in the marketplace. You apply pipe lubricant to the inside of your bell. You will, apply, you will apply pipe lubricant to the gasket and you will then use uh, proper force to insert one pipe into the other. This way, you have a product that can withstand 15 PSI of uh, uh, hydrostatic pressure should you have some any kind of buildup inside your storm sewer for a short duration of time. Right now, available from 750 to uh, now 2100 millimeter, uh, a little bit larger than 72 inch. Now the welded coupler. The welded coupler is another option. Uh, the bell and spigot that we just discussed is a low profile bell and spigot, but still you're gonna have a bell OD that will further reduce your ID in a slip line application. So if you can't do that, you can go with a, a plain end pipe that will be welded inside your hose pipe. Again, a couple of ways of doing it. You insert your pipes one at a time, you abut them together inside the pipe that was I was saying earlier, and then you weld the gap between these two pipes or you can assemble a train using couplers on the outside of your hose pipe and then pull or push that train inside the hose pipes. When you, once you're inside, a sheet of HDPE, same quality HDPE resin is being used to overlap the gap between the two plane and pipes. And it is welded by a team of arm tech uh, certified welders, HDPE welders. This is what it would look like. This is a picture from a storage tank build, being built in Humboldt, uh, Saskatchewan. The nice thing about this is every piece of pipe was put in the ground, uh, fixed together with the metal coupler. The contractor was able to start backfilling the whole thing, Doesn't have, didn't have to wait for every single joint to be welded. And then the team of welders could go inside and actually proceed with the welding of the joint. You're basically looking at uh, an, ex an HDP extrusion welder gun, similar to what you just saw uh, used to, being make the, to make the pipe. It's what we use in our manufacturing facility. It's a sheet of HDP resin. It is put over the gap and it is welded on both sides. This side, uh, this side has been welded. They're in the process of welding the other side. Now, even if you do slip line, eventually you're gonna come out of your hose pipe. So you might need fittings. The nice thing about uh, steel reinforced polyethylene pipe or any kind of HDP pipe for that matter is the versatility it offers and all fittings configurations are basically available. We can make elbows, we can make tees, we can make risers, risers with ladders inside. Whatever you might need once you're out of that hose pipe, 
uh, to connect to your existing infrastructure, we can basically manufacture. Now, I've been telling you that Duromax and steel reinforced polyethylene is a great product. Yeah. Me telling you is one thing. It'd be nice to know that it's been confirmed by a third party, would it not? So this is where the industry has decided to partner with a very well-known Canadian organization, the Geoengineering Center. In case you don't know about the Geoengineering Center, it was founded in 2001. It's a partnership between Queen's University and the Royal Military College in Kingston. And uh, one of the leaders of the Geoengineering Center is Professor Ian Moore, uh, one of the world leaders, uh, one of the best uh, professor, most knowledgeable about buried infrastructures. And under his expert supervision, steel reinforced polyethylene pipe was thoroughly studied. The nice thing about the Geoengineering Center is they have life-size facility a life-size facility, bury pit, you know, deep burial pit. This is a picture of the deep burial pit. And we have three people in front of it, just to give you an idea of the sheer size of that facility. With, within this deep burial pit right here, they can install any size pipe material, backfill it with any kind of uh, material they want. And using these hydraulics, uh, these hydraulic actuators, they can actually simulate ever deeper burial depth to get a, any product to its performance limits. What is nice as well is that they can do the same thing with live loads. They have a shallow burial pit that is underneath right here. And then using again, hydraulic actuators and uh, beams like these that make a footprint, they can simulate wheel loads of different size, uh, different intensity. And again, get to the actual performance limits of any uh, pipe material that you want to have tested. As you can see, it does generate a lot of data. Generates a lot of data because these pipes are fully instrumented once they're put inside uh, these pits. As you can see, this is a piece of Duromax pipe. I mean, I've seen people at the ICU with less monitoring than this, this piece of pipe, you know. Once you get all that information, use it using uh, finite element modeling, all that, what Dr. Ian, Ian Moore and his team were able to demonstrate is that Duromax, the steel reinforced polyethylene pipe, it will perform a lot closer to steel than HDPE. So in the long term, you want to use uh, equa steel equations to calculate the actual performance of the pipe. And the HDPE does what it does best. It protects everything. So you don't need to worry about corrosion degrading this uh, long-term performance of the Duromax product. All this research has led to the publication of detailed height of cover tables. And should you run into a project where, where the height of cover might exceed uh, this, uh, these numbers, reach out to your local ArmTech representative, regional sales manager, and uh, our engineering department will be able to help you figure out if we can go deeper or not, depending on the type of backfill material that you're using. So now that we know that the pipe is manufactured to meet the demands of the standard, that it has been thoroughly researched by a third party, the Geoengineering Center, to demonstrate its long-term capacity, how does the Romax stack up for an actual slip lining project? So you want to do this. You want to take the Duromax and you want to insert it into an existing system. Those are the attributes we were talking about earlier in the presentation. And I'm not going to read through all of those yet again. But let's look at this Duromax pipe. You've got high strength steel in, and fully encapsulated inside pressure rated polyethylene resin. You've got large sizes all the way up to 3000 millimeters, custom lengths available on demand a watertight bell and spigot system, or a welded system. Long jacking distance possible. Uh, it all depends on the sliding coefficient that you're uh, able to create inside your hose pipe. The safe jacking loads are pretty high. Good capacity to withstand grouting pressure. You've got a pipe that offers you the dimensions that will allow you to maximize your ID. So you have low profile OD. If you're looking at a 1500 millimeter or 60 inch pipe, you only have a 64 inch 
uh, bell OD. So that will allow you to actually maximize the ID inside the hose pipe you're trying to reline. We can even go in those sizes. We can go plain N as well if you want to maximize the ID even more. So when we go back and look at all these attributes that are needed from demanding standards all the way up to the lightweight, I think we can answer with a resounding yes that uh, Duromax will offer you these attributes for your upcoming slip lining project. So now that we've looked at the product in details and we have about, uh, yeah, still a little bit of time to go over the case studies, we'll go in details into a few case studies. The first one I wanna show you took place eight years ago uh, in British Columbia. So we're talking about a project in Campbell River, British Columbia, uh, underneath the Galerno Road. It's a, it was called Sims Creek, the creek that needed to be uh, uh, repaired. And there was an existing uh, steel structure there that had been in service for a long time. But as you can see from this picture, it had reached the end of his life cycle. I mean, uh, it was held together with uh, jacks and uh, pieces of wood. Uh, still, it was a 60-year-old 144-inch multiplate, so it's pretty good. It's better than not bad. It's pretty good that this thing had, la had lasted 60 years. Now they wanted to reline it because uh, they didn't want to disrupt traffic. It's an uh, important highway in that sector. So they wanted to reline it. The largest available Duromax was the 3,000 millimeter, 120 inch, so it would definitely fit inside that uh, steel structure. Since it was a corrugated steel structure, the Manning's coefficient was higher. So they were able to lower the Manning's coefficient and therefore maintain, if not improve, on the actual hydraulics of uh, the uh, culvert. Another advantage is they wanted custom lengths. So the product was uh, serviced with th about three meter lengths, 10 foot uh, length of uh, Duromax pipe. So what you do is, you wanna make sure that you clean, dewater. So obviously all these jacks had to be removed. Uh, the pipe had to be clean. Uh, the creek uh, had to be kind of diverted for a little while so you could do the job. And then since we're looking in this specific case at an existing corrugated uh, steel structure, so we have corrugation on the inside, your new pipe has corrugation on the outside, you have no other options. You need to install a skid system to facilitate the insertion of the new pipe inside the hose pipe. So this is how it was done. This is the first piece of pipe uh, about to be pulled inside. And this is how they did it. With that, with that very small excavator, uh, they pulled the chain through the segment. They, and using this uh, piece of wood right here, they were able to pull the whole thing uh, inside the uh, uh, hose pipe. I will have you notice the pipe was delivered with grout ports. And look at the top here at the 12 o'clock position. They made sure they had a series of grout ports lined up at the 12 o'clock position because they will, need, they will need to fill that annular space right here. So by having these grout ports up there, these on the side will be used to actually pump the grout in, but this one will be used, and a picture is always better than a drawing, uh, right here. They've used jacks that went through these ports all the way to the top of the existing structure. And this helped prevent flotation. So I'm just gonna go back to the previous slide. It was decided to have welded couplers. So welded couplers we've, ju we've just discussed extensively. Uh, so these jacks allowed them to actually pour in the grout in lifts until they were able to have enough grout around the pipe to remove these jacks and do the final lift on uh, the grout. They use a cellular grout, low viscosity, uh, very easy to pour, very, but I mean, any kind of grout will, pour, uh, will work as long as you don't exceed, exceed the capacity of uh, the Duromax pipe. Again, this is exactly what they did, what I was showing you at the beginning of the presentation. Ends were revolved on site. And uh, this is another nice thing about the uh, HDP and the steel reinforced polyethylene pipe. You can cut it to your needs in the field. And you will notice this is a very clever use of HDP tubing. 
they actually got a piece of HDP tubing, they slid it longitudinally, and they use, they snapped it over the bevel to make sure that the exposed steel would be protected in the long term. It is galvanized steel, but you want to be sure that it is protected in the long term. And just like that, you end up with a brand new pipe inside an old uh, failing infrastructure. And you've done that without disrupting traffic and uh, without having to dig out the existing infrastructure. Now, earlier this year, uh, with our friends at EPCOR and Edmonton, Alberta, uh, they needed to reline an existing oblong tunnel. They wanted to use it for more years and uh, it was an unfortunate state as you can see from those pictures. So they decided to reline it using 30 inch uh, Duromax in five feet, six inch custom length. So this, uh, these lengths were decided upon because of the uh, constraint at the entry and all these uh, pipes were pulled in and then the exact same method was used with grout ports at the 12 o'clock position. They uh, braced the pipe and they were able to pump grout inside that annular space by lift yet again. And this way the pipe would not float. And when the time came to do the final lift up here, these jacks were removed, the grout ports were plugged and the grout was pumped in. Now, we've talked about relining culverts and tunnels, but uh, it's nice to know that we can also do fully full storm, storm water lines. So this is a storm sewer in Livonia, Michigan. Uh, two years ago, this took place, almost two years ago. And it was, it was a design bill by our partners, Contech in the United States. They needed to reline about 300 meters, 1,000 feet of uh, existing an existing storm sewer, they, they, they didn't want to dig it up because it was an old industrial facility. Uh, there might have been issues with uh, contaminated soil, so they didn't want to dig, dig that up. So everything, what's very impressive about this project, it was supplied in custom lengths again, bell and spigot custom lengths, as you can see, uh, 2.1 meters, seven feet. Every single one of these lengths or a thousand feet was fed to one single entry point. So they were fed into the existing uh, sewer line. They were braced uh, at the top, on top of the line. So as they were uh, pulling the pipe in, they were able to uh, lubricate the bells and the spigots and do the insertion inside. And then they filled the annular uh, void, the, the annular space with grout. We have a video explaining what uh, took place there and uh, I'm gonna play it for you right now.
Okay, I thought there was some music playing in the background, but I think it summarized exactly what happened. And uh, again, if an image is, is worth a thousand words, a video was probably worth a million. So you could see that they avoided digging uh, extra entry pits. There was no soil disruption. They were able to actually uh, insert all the bell and spigot joints together, uh, proceed with a uh, water integrity, uh, uh, an integrity test, and then just uh, do the grouting in stages to make sure that everything worked fine. We've done work with the Ministry of Transportation in, of Ontario as well. This is a 2014 job. Uh, they needed to reline a culvert, uh, again, on a very busy uh, highway in Thunder Bay, Ontario. They didn't want to dig up that street. So working with the engineers at Atchmott McDonald and uh, Pioneer Construction, a uh, segment, segments of Duromax pipe were inserted for 27 meters inside an existing culvert uh, to uh, have a brand new culvert inside an old one. We've worked with the uh, Ministry of Transportation of New Brunswick as well. Uh, this job is from 2016, 74 meters of the largest size of a Duromax pipe available, 3,000 millimeters pulled inside an existing culvert that, was, that had started to uh, get into a state of uh, disrepair. So the nice thing is, again, using braces, uh, they were able to fill the annular uh, void, uh, the annular space around the pipe, and you can finish your end any way you want. In this specific case, they put in forms and then pour, they poured a concrete head wall, but you can do it whatever you want. You saw a bevel end on the Sims Creek project, so whatever needs to be done, we can adapt to it. Uh, the Ministry of Transportation of New Brunswick likes the product. This is another job they did, Chapman Corner in, uh, in New Brunswick, another culvert rehab. And again, here they decided to push the pipe in. So another method instead of pulling it. Finally, uh, a job in uh, Mobile, Alabama, uh, where they needed to reline an existing culvert in, uh, under a tarmac. There is no way an airport authority will let you dig up the tarmac if it can be avoided. The nice thing about airports, usually you get plenty of space around those. So again, here they were able to do two trains. The total length to be rehab was 1,742 feet. So they did a first pull of 542, a second pull of 1,200, and they only had to weld one joint inside uh, the uh, hose pipe once everything was pulled in. So now we've looked at how the pipe is made. We saw a couple of case studies. Uh, we're going to conclude because we want to let you uh, get back to work and to billable hours uh, at a proper time. So in conclusion, the strength of steel and the durability of HDP or the love story, you know, a strong relationship that lasts for a very long time. Keep that in mind. The product gives you probably the best strength to weight ratio uh, in the industry, a wide range of solid joints, and whatever you need to do, you can always reach out to our, uh, your local ArmTech resource uh, to get the technical support that you need. And today, I'm proud to share with you something very, very new that we launched, we launched yesterday. ArmTech yesterday launched its new virtual connect uh, system. So you can go to our website at any time. You can use the virtual connect uh, button right there, or you're gonna pop up at the bottom right of your screen. And at any time, you can chat with an ArmTech professional, an ArmTech engineer, to discuss the specifics of your project. If you want, you can set a meeting for a later date and time with an ArmTech engineer. So this virtual connect was launched yesterday by our team, uh, marketing team and Liz, maybe you want to expand a little bit more on that if you want, and I'll uh, hand the floor back to you to finalize the presentation and then get into the questions if we have received any. Thank you very much to the attendants, to uh, all the audience. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy day to attend this ArmTech webinar. We really appreciate it. It's the new way of conducting business. We might see less of you face-to-face, -face, 
but we want you to know we want you to know that we're available online we're available for zoom meetings teams meetings we can turn the camera what's in it's a one-on-one -on -one because it doesn't take as much bandwidth as a webinar and we look forward to talking to you and discussing your upcoming projects for 2021 thank you very much and have a great great day so we'll be moving on to our question and answer period uh, please continue to submit your questions. Today's webinar is the second of a three-part series. We hope you will stick with us for upcoming events. Our next Reline and Rehabilitation webinar will be on Thursday, September 24th, and it will focus on the use of spiral-wound trenchless technology. To stay informed, please stay connected with us. You can follow us on social media, including Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. And we will now move on to the question and answer portion of the presentation. All right, Martin. Uh, yes. First question: Slip lining is great in installation in an installation process, but its reduction on the cross-sectional area from the original cover culvert would reduce the flow capacity through the pipe. How do you address this issue? Well, this is very true, and uh, we we feel that first of all. Most of, the, most of the times we reline older infrastructures with uh, rougher surfaces, higher manning coefficient, and uh, the product, uh, the Duramax products offers a manning coefficient of 0 0.012. But needless to say, uh, hydraulics calculations will need to be run. I mean, uh, before you can confirm if the, the diameter you're looking at can be inserted, you're gonna need to do your hydraulics calculations and verify that your new culvert will offer you the capacity you need. All right. Thank you, Martin. Um, and what is the design service life for Duramax pipe? The design service life, basically it's governed by HDP. Like I said, uh, HDP, we were using a uh, pressure rated HDP resin. HDP has a recognized service life of uh, up to a hundred years by Florida DOT, MTO. Uh, so, anywhere between 75 and 100, and I'm very comfortable mentioning a 100-year service life for the product. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so uh, another attendee has said that they're finding uh, host pipe conditions are giving them issues. They also asked about the life expectancy, yep. which you've just addressed. It says here, pit size may be an issue uh, for installation. Um, do they always need to install um, in dry conditions, and uh, what is the quality assurance on the welding inspection protocol? The okay, that that's a, it's things, a yeah. multifaceted question. So, yeah. the first thing we have to keep in mind is still the hose pipe needs to be in reasonably decent shape. I mean, if you've got several uh, points where it's collapsed entirely, there's no way you're going to be able to uh, slip line anything inside of it. Uh, the pit size, well, that's where the custom lengths uh, come into play. I mean, if you are constrained for space, then we can make, I mean, short lengths. We saw uh, the project at, uh, with EPCOR, we were talking about five feet, six inch uh, segment lengths. So that gives you uh, uh, a good, you know, plenty of options. So, but yeah, you need to think about the pit size. How can you actually access the line, the the system that needs to be relined. And finally, about the QA, QC, well, the product is air tested, uh, laser measured for the welding. It has to undergo a gamut, a full gamut of tests under CSA uh, to uh, actually uh, be uh, certified for sale. So that's how uh, this thing is done. And uh, if uh, the gentleman needs more information about QA, QC, we can uh, get together offline and uh, I will be more than happy to share the details about uh, the QAQC. And I saw another question, Liz, about the bell and spigot. Are they installed at the factory? Yes, they are. The pipe is made with uh, bell and spigot when it is shipped with bell and spigot. That's how it's made. Okay, thank you very much, Martin. Um, another question, can Duramax be cut in the field? Yes, it can. Well, you saw that uh, the job on Sims Creek, uh, it was uh, bevel, so they cut it for bevel. Uh, you want to be sure that if you expose any of the steel, you find a way to protect it. It's galvanized steel. It's not like it's going to rust through, but uh, it's even better to protect it. So you can do it the clever way they did it with a uh, piece of uh, HDP tubing 
or you can use uh, coatings, uh, HDP based coatings to protect the steel that is exposed. Okay, um, and uh, one final question then. Uh, should the annular space always be filled with grout? It is much preferable to fill it always. It is, okay. Yeah. Per perfect, thank you. Well, um, I think I speak for many when I say I'm glad that steel and HDP swiped right. <laughs> Um, so that's all we have time for left for today. As you learned in the presentation, there are many Duramax reline and rehabilitation applications and ArmTech can help support you through the selection and design process. Liz, uh, if I may, uh, oh, how yes. will the participants receive the uh, uh, certification credit? Oh, the, 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 the participation uh, certificate, I'm sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. No, everybody can expect to receive that automatically uh, within a week. It will be uh, look for it in your inbox. If you do not see it, then please contact myself at market marketing at armtech.com and I'll make sure that you get your certificate. Thank you very much, Liz.